In this video, we're going to be breaking down the following typical themes of the Slav defense. How to play the London system with colors reversed. How to punish the early advance with c5. After that, we will be dealing with the Catalan. And in the end of the video, I'm going to be showing you one key trick that you can use uh, to create winning chances against the exchange variation. Okay, we're getting the black pieces and opponent opens up with uh, d4, which means it's Slav defense time going right into the slav and he plays with e3 and playing knight f6 and against knight f3 he will be developing the bishop to f5 again there are like many playable setups but during this series i will be playing with bishop f5 because i think it's the one that's mostly resembling the london system so against bishop d3 you can definitely take but i think perhaps even more interesting would be to play bishop g6 and then I think we just uh, go like e6. Thing is, I'm not playing knight d7 because of cd. And then, uh, and then, yeah, if we get into that structure with his knight on c3 against my knight on d7, it's kind of bad usually. Maybe not the worst here, but uh, it's definitely something that you want to keep in mind. It's a small trick that's very powerful in the Slav. So we play e6, so we can play knight d7. And if they are taking, we take with the pawn that's quite important and opponent plays uh, bishop b2 just setting up like um, yeah just like a very normal position i'm thinking whether i should start with knight e4 or not i think i like that because it's like setting up a trick but also bishop d6 is fine i think we'll develop bishop because it's natural so like the trick with knight e4 was if they go knight d2 i believe there was knight x on f2 and we're winning but could potentially still go for that at some point and this is pretty much like next move yeah queen e2 just knight e4 and we're getting something really really similar to the london and i think black should also be like quite comfortable objectively speaking i've been looking up these positions a bit okay on knight e5 first things thing would be to take and play knight c5 expecting bishop c2 in that position and i'm not sure how to evaluate it also, maybe queen c7 is interesting with ideas to put pressure on the long diagonal. He might be like playing f4 though, anyways. Next move. I think it's like the position could get a bit boring if I take one at night, but I think that could be objectively best. Taking and just stepping back to like e7. I know it's not like the most fun game ever, but I think it's um, it's good. So only move like taking with a pawn. I'm trying to understand whether it makes sense to play bishop c5 or not i guess we just go to like e7 and i guess they will develop the knight either like c3 and d2 and then we pretty much just go for like the trade whenever they do and trade everything and we just have like a very solid position we just try to play that on and hope to take advantage of some mistakes in a later phase of the game just gonna be castling short not afraid of g4 f5 kind of stuff maybe i should so he plays knight c3 as expected earlier and um i think we just take i don't really see much of an alternative i mean we're not like forced to take which is like worth noting but i think it's okay taking and Taking on d3, maybe even taking c4. Just feels like a very easy way to equality. Yeah, just like taking, forcing queen takes, because if he goes for the end game, he's just gonna activate my pieces. And I'll just try to say that we are pretty much up upon on the queen side with this three against uh, two majority. Because of the double pawns, obviously. It's not going to be like that simple, but I think it's a very healthy concept in general. Like, queen d5 is the super automatic move in the possession. He plays rook d1, we like trade queens, play rook d8. I think that's like doable. Probably should just stick to the supernatural way of playing. Because, like, alternative would be queen b6, but then. 
He's got all kinds of bishop d4. Maybe queen b6 was a bit better idea if they play there. Uh, we have c5, bishop back, and then queen c6 with b5, but okay. I think queen d5 just felt really natural, and I think we're playing rook d8 now, and the idea is to mid e4 with uh, queen check, and rook d1 will be met by queen e4, I think. And again, it looks um, very pleasant, potentially putting pressure on the pawn on e3 in the near future. Also, queen e3 is like a pretty unpleasant move for my opponent, among other things, just taking advantage of the... Can we call that an outpost? Technically speaking. Not sure, but it's like a very juicy square to enter our white scan. So we see rook d1, kind of expected. Just gonna be playing queen e4, as I said, and maybe opponent can try out some kind of queen f3 move with the idea to get rid of my annoying queen. But then I think we could like simply go for the trade. He's gotta be forced to take with a pawn. And maybe like simplest plan would be to trade both rooks and then try to get into the bishop end games. Again, trying to use the pawns as an asset because of, the, of their capacity of creating a, a passed pawn. But it's kicking after which I think it's a mistake because bishop c5 is creating a very unpleasant uh, threat of taking on f4 which might have been missed initially by my opponent and I think he has to play g3 now sort of like only move and then maybe I could simply play rook d5 he goes bishop d4 but that's losing the pawn on f4 it's kind of unfortunate for my opponent but it's actually not as simple as it looks because if i take it with a rook he's gonna go for the trade and then he's infiltrating and kind of have to take one f4 but then he just steps back and He's got some compensation. Okay, he's straight up resigned. Not sure why. I mean, sure, I'm like still much better after just like queen g5 and then I double up rooks. But I don't think, you know, you need to resign in this type of positions. The opponent opens up with the English opening. I'm going to be playing c6 with the idea to... Yeah, if he goes d4, just getting back into the Slav defense. Otherwise, yeah, we're getting into some kind of English opening slash ready territory. And we have a very, <laughs> very odd opening because he plays c5. And I haven't checked this, but I think e5 is the best move. Because if he takes, we just stay there. And we have managed to establish this pretty nice center of pawns. We've got, you know, a little bit of extra space. And... I think knight f6 is fine, but I think starting queen g5 is even better. Keeping an eye on this one. It's like a super weird position to explain. But it's just like making it uncomfortable for white to play. And also could advance this pawn like this. He's gonna be playing h4, I'm going queen g6. And then like knight's coming to g4. Fine trading bishops. Not really an issue. Maybe it's not that simple because he's getting the knight to like h6. Maybe starting knight d7 is precise. Then that idea. Because, like, I would love to have bishop on d6 take on f4 whenever he gets the knight there, but this pawn's actually a bit annoying now. So, yeah, he's doing that and. Just knight f6. Knight f4, queen h6, and then, like, knight g4. Bit of a strange game. Not gonna lie. But if he castles, I think we get a good attack after g5. That I can tell for sure. Kind of has to take. Otherwise, yeah, it was looking pretty ugly. And now once we get in this h4 push, it, it looks very, very nice for us. King h2. This really makes me want to throw in some kind of knight g4. Bishop takes, pawn takes, king g2, and then... 
Um, he might be getting a cage one in time, and we don't have enough. Which is pretty sad, but could also just play h4. I might be rushing with that, though. I don't want to, like, rush things. Also, like, I don't have a lot of other, like, useful moves. This might actually be interesting with knight e5. This might be an interesting piece sack. And I think I'm just gonna go for it because it's, like, super fun. So, bishop takes on c5, idea. If he takes, I just wanna play knight e5, getting my knights around his king, trying to say that, well, I'm ready to play h4 and you're about to get made at. Not sure if that, like, makes any sense, but... I don't see an obvious refutation, which, yeah, <laughs> just kind of makes me want to go for it. Not sure this is like any good again. It was definitely not necessary, but once I spotted this idea of taking on c5, I simply couldn't really let it go. So there we go. <laughs> yeah, he takes with a point as expected. Now knight e5 was the point and like h4 is next. Let's see, if he takes on c8, maybe he could still throw in h4, but probably we're just going to be taking back with a rook, since we have sort of a long-term initiative. He goes b3 with this idea, but I think he's just like uh, way too slow, as we're already threatening to take on g3 with all kinds of mating threats, as you will see. Already big threat, take on g3, pawn takes, bishop takes on h3, knight takes, and then... The simple queen h6 just wins back the knight with like a decisive attack, so um, that is like one of the problems. I can definitely find many, uh, many others, and I think simplest is now to take pawn takes and play like knight eg4. Only move kind of king g1, then knight takes on e3 looks winning. He's got maybe bishop d7 as a cute trick, but there is just like... Uh, Maybe even king takes, that wins. Yeah, okay, that doesn't work. That doesn't work for him, yeah. Also, like, a nice one after taking is to play bishop g4. Because he's just pinned and kind of stuck. But I think just simplest, go for the check. Force king g1, knight takes on e3, and queen's coming over to, like, g3. He's just uh, pretty much doomed. He's gonna have bishop g2, but... I'm assuming rook g8 is just like crashing in that position. Mm, do we have something like more clear cut? Like takes and long castle, for example. That might be actually a bit more clear cut. So I think takes and knight g4 is actually maybe simplest. So like king g1, then we have queen e3 check, and then king g2, knight e3 check. So like here, king g2, knight e3, king f2. We need to win there somehow, I mean, there must be a win. Oh, just knight takes with check, yeah. I have a bad habit of missing, like, super obvious wins. But I think we've got this one now. So we take with check, yeah, and he simply resigns. Okay, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys are curious whether this bishop takes on c5 move was legit or not, so that's why we're going to be going into the analysis tab, and computer is giving bishop e7. But I think he's going to realize once we make the move that it's really strong. Okay, so first of all, it's giving like minus 0, 0.7, but I think it's... I think the computer, I mean, this weaker computer doesn't really feel the power of our initiative. Because if we like play on the moves, I think it's going to be like increasing the score. So now you see like it started as like minus 0, 0.7 and... Now it's almost double. I'm like really expecting it to go down to like minus two. Okay, I mean, it is minus two, but like first line is to take on c8 and play f3. I mean, what human plays f3 in this position? I don't know. Maybe one that doesn't want to get made at. But like anyways, he's just like so losing here, I feel like, in a practical game, there's just like no threat, no way of actually dealing with this h4 threat, while these pieces are not ever gonna participate in the game, that's what really made me go for this intuitive piece sack. It just feels like the attack's playing itself. Getting black pieces against like a 1400 opponent, I think that's like the highest rated player that we are 
so far dealing with in the at 18 crime and he opens up with d4 and uh, then goes for the queen's gambit we're gonna be going for the slap defense and it's gonna be pretty interesting because he's playing the catalan version and against the catalan i think i'll try to actually grab this pawn on c4 and then we might actually be able to hang on to it with like b5 and the idea is to play like bishop b7 knight e7 e6 and they're usually gonna be just going like b3 and try to say that uh, well it's not such a big deal, they just sack the pawn. Getting into like pretty complex positions that are not very simple to understand. Against a4, I think we're pretty much just playing a6. And then, yeah, just take with the a pawn. Just keeping everything defended. And I think we could be dealing with this knight by playing knight ft7. Because we need to keep c6 defended. But usually they will do something like b3. That I know for sure. Otherwise, we develop e6, bishop e7, castle, and just like try to, you know, hang on to that pawn and get into some kind of endgame and win. That's pretty much the strategy. Not really super complex, but just try to, yeah, steal the pawn and live with it. <laughs> Can try to challenge his knight immediately. Thing is, I don't really like his knight to stay there forever, but I think we started with e6 is fine. Seems very natural, just opening up bishop's path, and he does go b3, which is the right thing to do. I think we should take, no really other move that pops to mind, and can he actually take? We have some queen d4 mod f's, if he takes. Okay, opponent plays e3, just defending this pawn, preparing to take back with a queen the question is whether do we challenge this knight immediately or if we play bishop d6 take i wouldn't necessarily love to give him the bishops so i think i'll just play knight d7 important do not use this knight because then c6 drops so i think we're using this one hitting the knight and uh, yeah as long as we can like force him back or something i think it's definitely a great achievement and we might be just taking with a knight developing we are up one so far i mean i can play c5 just sort of equalizing on the spot after the trades he takes on b5 maybe it's still not gonna be easy to castle i think we're just gonna be playing bishop e7 and castling no need to like be messing around too much and uh, yeah bishop a3 is kind of a nice idea trading he's sort of bad bishop Wondering whether we can actually throw in b4, bishop takes in queen b8. I think that might be a thing. He's not forced to take, but if he does, I think we're winning a piece. And also, if we... I mean, we should, we can, like, just castle as well, and we're, like, up a pawn. Just, like, b4, bishop b2. Maybe c5 is good then. Yeah, that actually feels good for us. Just gonna go for that, because on bishop b2, we have c5. I'm not, like, just fishing for the... Three piece. Also queen b6 I think wins by the way, but like this is I think class here. And yeah, the point was just that well we couldn't really have played c5 previously because b5 was dropping, but now if he plays let's say bishop b2, we have c5 and then yeah, just like taking over the initiative, I feel like. So that's why I thought it's great, and yeah, it's just a bonus that he's taking over the bishop and we managed to like win the piece there with this like small tactic. Queen b6 was also doable, but yeah. And he also does find the resign button. Okay. Opponent opens up with uh, d4. We don't see that very often. Uh, gonna be going for the Slav defense. Hopefully we can get into some like spicy main lines. We do see knight c3. Gonna be playing knight f6. And on knight f3 we take on c4. Uh, now we're getting back into like the exchange variation. We see bishop to g5. And the uh, I think we're just gonna be like developing. I'm not really like afraid of this kind of move, to be fair. So we're just gonna develop, just inviting opponent to take. It's pretty much like a Tompowski, I would say, if he takes. And. 
I think I'm gonna play in a6. I think it's like a useful move and idea to play bishop f5 and meet queen b3 with like rook b8 or something. You're just gonna go bishop g4. Mm, just to get my bishop out. f3, yeah. Just going bishop h5 to g6. Okay, just offering the bishop trade. You are spreading knight f4, obviously, and win the bishop pair. Do we take on d3 and we're developing his queen? I think we might be preferring to play um, e6, I have a feeling. So on a3, I think can simply continue developing with like bishop e7. Then castling. Okay, I mean, if he doesn't take on g6, I might be taking on d3 first before castling. So after knight f4, I think we're just gonna go for the bishop trade. Just keeping it very simple. And then we can like finally get ourselves castled. Rook c1, just like activating the rook as well. Just making common sense moves at this point. Not really much going on. Maybe playing knight d7 next, offering like bishop trade. Could also consider knight h5, taking away options such as bishop f4. Because like knight d7, you can still like reject the trade. Queen b3 hitting this guy. Can we just go like knight a5 and then knight c4? Maybe that's a thing. Can activate a knight. Just gonna plant the knight there. It's gonna be hard for him to deal with it because b3 allows knight takes on a3. But please, queen e2. Playing h6 is always kind of useful. Question is whether we want to trade this knight or not. I mean, this bishops by moving the knight to like h5. Because if I play knight d7, he's got like bishop f4. Do you guys think he'll like reject the trade? But my knight on h5 will be a bit, a bit like misplaced. Okay, h6 looks very, very useful. Maybe I should just ignore it after bishop h4 and do my thing here with b5. He plays bishop to f4 actually. I'm just gonna go b5. Problem is he can't really play e4 because we take and then this pawn will hang. So he's gotta like come up with a plan. Maybe now he tries g4, but I think it's like really double-edged. We see rook d1. I was thinking maybe just like queen b6. I did play a5 and maybe b4 at some point. Maybe also queen a5 was a move with threats such as knight takes on a3. But queen b6 is like more natural though. Yeah, the thing is I'm not necessarily threatening a5 and b4 because it's going to be uh, taking and then bringing the knight to like c5. But uh, okay, we sort of forced him to play knight a2. Which I don't think is an amazing move, judging by the looks of it. So perhaps just going to be continuing with this now. What if he goes 95? Uh, that was kind of doable. It's not really threatening anything though, so maybe I can play a5. Still keeping my strong knight there. Could also take and play knight d7. I think anything is fine, but it was probably better than yeah, just making this really ugly knight a2 move. Cause he sort of made his knight really passive for no reason. Maybe best move now is go knight c3 back. With the idea to meet b4 with knight a4 as I was saying. Kinda tricky to play as white cause he is like a bit more passive and I think sort of the only constructive plan would be something like this and just go all out on the king side. But I think that plan is kind of slow now and we're already ready to take over the initiative on the queen side. So he plays queen f2 with the idea to play e4 because now he is sort of uh, defending this guy on d4. Maybe we can just play rook d8. I think this move is going to be giving him some nightmares because he still can't get in e4 because of takes and then this pawn hangs. Oh, I don't think he was threatening e4. I just forgot about that. This move makes no sense now. We'll just try to say it's <laughs> it's a useful waiting move. Okay. Goes rook b1. Going more and more passive. 
You left the seed. Just gonna go B4. AB obviously taking with the A pawn. This was a very subtle one. Managed to like really confuse my opponent <laughs> with it. But I thought he was threatening to play E4. Forgot that the queen is no longer there. So yeah, that's why I played it. But now I think B4, he pretty much has to take. Okay, so he plays A4, interesting. Then we have queen C6. And like B3, the knight's like infiltrating. Plays rook C1 and then just like queen B6 and we're better with that knight on A3. Just like a thorn in, in a thorn in black's position. I mean in white's position. What am I saying? <laughs> um, yeah, just there, I think. Feels natural. I'm not really like threatening to take as he has B3 and the knights defended by the queen. But just the fact that we get this knight to like a super juicy outpost, I think it's like really nice. Mm, do we play queen b6 or like a6? If like from there it's like keeping an eye on this diagonal. Might be useful. Giving some knight c5 options though. Which I'm not sure about. Hmm. Okay, I think I'll go queen b6. The knight looks kind of trapped, but I think it's like a very good knight. Until opponent proves it otherwise. <laughs> So, I think in some positions we could potentially infiltrate on the second rank. Maybe I'm just kind of over overestimating my position a bit. Could also be the case. Okay, I mean, what I don't like about my position is the fact that I don't have an obvious way to like continue play here. So I need to come up with a, with a bit of a plan. And I hope I knew how to create constructive plans in chess. Because I can't seem to come up with one now. Just gonna play knight d7. Trying to say that we're making some kind of a solid, useful move. Playing a number of like weird moves in this game, not gonna lie. Can just trade that, I think. And I think knight on a3 compared to like uh, knight on a2 is like better. And that is like giving me some hope. Maybe just trade off his bishop with us. What a boring position. Well, in order to be like a strong player, you need to be good at boring chess too. Like probably opponents like you, you can just like play boring chess and you like ruin your position and that's how <laughs> we get a free win. Not saying it's the case, but it's like generally the case. Okay, queen a6. Why did trade and play rook c8? Idea is to play rook c6 followed by like queen c8. Mm -hmm. I'll try out this move. I think it's leading to interesting play. He was not forced, but... Okay, he has knight b for sort of bailing out. I think these pawns are potentially very dangerous. Queen c6, maybe winning another one. After we play c3. He was not forced to take that knight, though. I think he's giving me very interesting play for, like, no reason. No particular reason. I can play c3, but just taking the free pawn, I think, is better. Because now he's no longer taking on c4. So now I think the pawns should be like overwhelming. Maybe white can still defend with precise play, but it looks very, very tough to play. And with black is like so fun. Just push him. Okay, c3. Pushing pawns. C2 next. <laughs> Not really much opponent can do about it. We need to like only move, but then c2 wins. Okay, he flags, we get a win. Guess position was winning at this point as well. So, um, had to come up with like this innovative idea of playing knight c4. Oh, it's too bad we had the like the analysis layout. That's kind of ugly, I forgot about it. 
but uh, yeah, I hope you guys won't really hate it in the video. <laughs> um, and then I went for this knight c4 move. And yeah, like problem was if he like uh, bails out after this. I don't like knight c4 because we could have waited with it a bit. Maybe like this and play it a bit later. Because I don't think he can take and play queen c1. Okay, he can apparently. And knight c4 in this position, maybe it's like an interesting try as well. Because I think it's still very hard to play. And you pretty much have like no risks as black. Like most of the times white will just have to give up the piece for two pawns. But if they're not like precise, you just win. And yeah, like problem for my opponent was that he was greedy. He should have sacked. And I was probably supposed to play C3 and try to hold this queen end game, which looks defendable, honestly. It's still not simple though. And then after queen c6, it just was like so fun. So that's like what I'm expecting in general. Like you play an interesting sacrifice and I think low rated players just tend to collapse quickly. Imagine it's only been like three moves and he's got like a resignable position after c3. It only took like three moves. Thanks a lot for making it this far into the video and if you're looking for more content make sure to check out uh, some of the previous episodes from the same series.